Looking great this morning. I read Christmas. Let me hear you sing. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that held our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain. Christ is born down in a lowly manger. The humble Christ was born, and God sent us salvation. That blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the Christ is born while shepherds kept their watching or silent blocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go and tell it on the mountain over the hills. And everywhere and go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere and go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Oh, 
singing great this morning, Brother Roy. Hey, man. Thank you, Brother Landon. I've, I've got one on. Good morning. Merry Christmas. We're so glad that you're here today on this Christmas Day to celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? It is because of him that we have something to celebrate today. If you're our guest this morning, we want to welcome you to Central. Thank you so much for joining us on this special day. We pray that you've already been made to feel welcome. We ask you if you would do us a small favor before leaving today in the seat back in front of you, you'll see a card called a Connect Card. If you'll take a moment today to fill that out for us, we would love to have a record of your visit with us. But also, we would like to be able to show up to your house later this week for leftover Christmas meal. All right? Just teasing. But we would love it if you'd fill that card out. It'd be our way to reach back out to you and tell you some of the great things that the Lord is doing here at Central and tell you more about our fellowship here. So if you would fill that out, at the conclusion of today's service, if you'll just go by the Connect table out in our lobby, Brother Doyle Boutwell will be back there, and you can just take that card to him. He'll give you a guest bag, our way of saying thank you for coming to worship with us today. A couple quick announcements. Number one, there is no midweek Bible study this week, so there will not be a Wednesday night service this week. And then also next Sunday, New Year's Day, you can start the year fulfilling your New Year's resolution of not missing church. All right, so you can just be here next Sunday morning. We're going to have all regularly scheduled services. We'll have our Sunday school hours, 8.30, 9.30, and 11. We're also going to have both our 9.30 and 11 o'clock worship service. We pray that you have all had a great Christmas thus far and that you enjoy this day with your family and your friends and that you have a very happy and blessed 2023. And remember this, our happiness uh, and our joy as Christians is not based on what's going on in the world around us. It's based in the fact that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings, He is the Lord of Lords, and He is on the throne, and that will never, ever change. Amen? Give Him praise this morning. We thank you so much for being with us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask His blessing on the remainder of today's service. Father, we love you, and we thank you, Lord, so much. God, we praise you for your incredible love that you have for us. Lord, we ask your blessings today on this service. May your name be honored and magnified and lifted up. In Jesus' name, amen.
When I was a kid, there was this one day I was troubled about something. I don't even remember what it was. My father noticed and um, he comes over to me and he places his hands on my head and he says, Shalom, son. Do you know what that means? Yes, I nodded. I said, I meant peace. Then my daddy, he, uh, he knelt beside me and he took my face in his big calloused shepherd's hands. And he said, yes, peace, but more. And then he put a finger on my heart and he said, Shalom, God's highest and most complete good be upon you. That is my prayer for you, my son. He left his staff with me and I've looked for it, what he mentioned, shalom, all these years. When the angels came, there was no hint of wind, no clouds, just stars, <laughs> so many stars. <sighs> he showed himself to us <laughs> suddenly. And there was an angel brighter than stars who spoke and said, do not be afraid. I have good news. Your savior has... Your savior has been born. And he lies in a manger. And then quiet as if the whole world is waiting to breathe. A savior, God's highest and most greatest good for us, for me. And then suddenly, multitudes of angels shattered, shattered the silence, saying glory, glory, glory. God is on earth. His peace on earth. My father's prayers, I've seen Finally, shalom, peace. Let's all stand together as we continue to worship this morning. Oh, yeah. 
Señores y magos vinieron a ti a rendir adoración. Ángeles ahora cantan a Dios nueva canción. Pues al mundo ha llegado el regalo de Dios, paz y salvación. I'll continue singing this morning. We sing Silent Night, Holy Night. i 
Amen. That's the way it's supposed to be sung. Please be seated. Good morning, and I want to say welcome to our Spanish ministry. We are so glad to have you in worship with us today. One church, amen? So I'm going to ask for grace in advance because Brother Pastor Juan and I are going to attempt to sing this song together. <laughs> I was like, I was not prepared for that. <laughs> um, we're going to have this message today both in English and in Spanish. And I will say to our Spanish ministry that it doesn't matter what language we sing praises to God in, it's always, always beautiful. And thank you so much for bringing that beautiful song today to the congregation. <laughs> My dad's saying, does he want to repeat it? Bueno, lo que le estaba, <laughs> lo que le estaba diciendo que le agradece mucho ¿verdad? al Ministerio Español y que no importa el lenguaje que hablemos, eh, es hermoso poder alabar juntos al Señor y, y que pues muchas gracias. So I told you today would be our service, but that was not taken into account that the sermon would be said twice. So I'm going to ask for your forgiveness in advance. It's only si going to be two hours. Solamente va a ser dos horas. No contamos que lo íbamos a hacer en dos idiomas, así que bueno, prepárense. <laughs> but Pastor Juan has promised me. He said, "Don't worry, Roy. You talk too much. I can condense down to what you say in just a sentence." <laughs> I go to the main part. <laughs> All right. If you have your Bibles today, let me invite you to turn with us to Matthew chapter 1. Acompáñanos a Mateo capítulo 1, por favor. And I'm going to ask every one of you would please stand as we honor the reading of God's word. Por favor, pónganse en pie para darle lectura a la palabra del Señor. And what I'm going to do this morning um, is just follow along. The words will be on the screen, but I'm going to ask Pastor Juan if he would read verses 18 through 25, and the English words will be on the screen so we can follow along with him. Leemos la palabra del Señor en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. El nacimiento de Jesucristo fue así. Estando desposada María, su madre, con José, antes que se juntasen, se halló que había concebido del Espíritu Santo. José, su marido, como era justo y no quería infamarla, quiso dejarla secretamente. Y pensando él en esto, He aquí un ángel del Señor le apareció en sueños y le dijo, José, hijo de David, no temas recibir a María tu mujer, porque lo que en ella es engendrado del Espíritu Santo es. Y dará a luz un hijo y llamará su nombre Jesús, porque él salvará a su pueblo de sus pecados. Todo esto aconteció para que se cumpliese lo dicho por el Señor por medio del profeta cuando dijo, He aquí una virgen concebirá y dará a luz un hijo y llamarás su nombre Emmanuel, que traducido es Dios con nosotros. Y despertando José del sueño, hizo como el ángel del Señor le había mandado y recibió a su mujer, pero no la conoció hasta que dio a luz su hijo primogénito y le puso por nombre Jesús. Let's pray. Oremos. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the day. We thank you, God, for the privilege to be in your house. And Lord, I thank you for every person who's here. Thank you, Lord, for those who are joining us online. We pray, God, today that your Holy Spirit would speak into our hearts and into our lives. And Lord, I pray that today in our weakness, you would be made strong. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be Amen. seated. Well, today is a special day. Hoy es un día muy especial. This only happens one time every six to eleven years. Solamente esto sucede de seis a siete años. It averages out to once every seven years that Christmas actually falls on a Sunday. Una vez cada siete años el día de Navidad cae en domingo. I've, every time it's happened in my 28 years here on staff, I've been asked, "Are el, we going to cancel church because it's on?" Christmas. En los, en los 28 años de ministerio que, que llevo acá, eh, siempre que cae el día de Navidad en domingo, siempre me pregunta que si se va a cancelar el, el servicio. And the answer is always the same. Absolutely not. La respuesta siempre es la misma. Seguro que no. I think you would all agree with me this morning that Jesus Christ has already been canceled and removed 
from far too much. Yo creo que todos estaríamos de acuerdo que el nombre del Señor Jesucristo se ha cancelado y se ha sacado demasiado de la vida cotidiana de este país. God forbid that we would cancel the worship of King Jesus because his birthday falls on the Lord's day. Dice que Dios no permita que nunca podamos cancelar un servicio, especialmente un domingo, eh, porque es el día donde nosotros celebramos que su hijo, el Rey de Reyes y Señor de Señores, ha nacido. I actually love the fact that Christmas falls on a Sunday. Dice que a él le encanta que el día de Navidad caiga en domingo. Because it is really all about him, it seems only appropriate that his people would gather together to worship him on his birthday. Dice que todo se trata de él y que no hay otra cosa mejor que su pueblo se reúna en el día que celebramos su nacimiento para alabar al y so glorificar su nombre. Just a few minutes with you this morning and share with you and answer this question. Why did Jesus come? Y en esta mañana vamos a estar mirando por qué Jesús vino al mundo. Why did the creator of all things willfully and willingly choose to leave his home in heaven. ¿Por qué el, el Hijo de Dios y, y el Dios Todopoderoso decidió dejar el cielo, su gloria y venir a la tierra? Why did he choose to come to a sin-filled world? Why was he born? ¿Por qué escogió venir a un mundo lleno de pecado y por qué finalmente nació? It's no nosotros? secret that we are living, church, in an extremely secular culture. Es, eh, could you repeat that? I'm sorry. It's no secret that we're living in an extremely secular culture. No hay, no hay, no es secreto que estamos viviendo en un mundo extremadamente secular. And in our secular culture, over these last few decades, it has become increasingly offensive for many people to have any mention of Jesus Christ. At Christmas. Y en este mundo secular donde estamos viviendo hoy día se ha convertido en una ofensa muy grande tan siquiera mencionar el nombre de Jesús en el tiempo de Navidad. The truth is those who are offended by Jesus Christ are not only offended by him on Christmas, they are offended by any mention of his name. No solamente estas personas o este mundo secular se ofende cuando mencionamos a Jesús sino también en cualquier momento donde se menciona a Jesús, no solamente en la Navidad. As an encouragement to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Y como una manera de alentar a nuestros hermanos en Cristo. I would say to you, do not be discouraged by this fact because it is not anything new. Eh, le dice que por favor no se desanimen por este hecho porque verdaderamente no es nada nuevo. But we would be blind if we refused to acknowledge that these attacks against Christ and his church do seem to get increasingly worse with each passing year. Y yo diría que estaríamos ciegos si no nos hemos dado cuenta que en los últimos años estos ataques se han incrementado hacia la iglesia de Jesucristo. It, in reality, church, it should not surprise us as Christians that lost people want to remove the mention of Jesus Christ from anything and everything. Y no, de, no nos debemos sorprender que los perdidos quieran remover el nombre de Cristo de cualquier lugar donde se encuentre aún de las iglesias también. <laughs> In all honesty, I have to tell you, the fact that lost people don't want a mention of Christ, that is not what discourages me. El, el hecho de que el, los perdidos no quieran mencionar a Cristo no, no es un motivo para él desalentarse. What is discouraging and very sad is that within many churches today, Jesus Christ is slowly but surely being removed. Lo que es desalentador es que lamentablemente muchas iglesias sí se está removiendo el nombre de Cristo poco a poco I would de sus servicios. You, I would say to you that if we remove Jesus from the church, we are no longer a church, we are nothing more than a social gathering of people. Si removemos a Cristo del centro de la iglesia, no somos otra cosa que simplemente un grupo social que se reúne cada domingo. And we are a godless one at that. Y estaremos sin Dios. As a result of all the attacks, y como resultado de todos los ataques, we are told that it is offensive for us as Christians to say, Merry Christmas. Y se ha convertido en una ofensa 
eh, para algunas personas que nosotros los cristianos digamos feliz Navidad. But rather we should say happy holidays or seasons greetings. Y en vez de, de tenemos que estar diciendo felices fiestas o, o feliz temporada. I don't know about you, but for me it will always be Merry Christmas. Yo no sé para usted, pero para mí siempre será feliz Navidad. If the righteous, holy, perfect, amen. If the righteous, perfect and holy God. Si el justo, eh, maravilloso y bueno Dios. The sinless, all-knowing, all-powerful God of heaven and earth. Aquel que es todopoderoso, el Dios de los cielos y la tierra. If the mention of him is offensive si to lost a él, sinful people. Es ofensivo para otros. I'm sorry. Lo siento. But Our sin is deeply offensive to him. Pero nuestro pecado es profundamente ofensivo para él. As followers of Christ Church, como seguidores de la Iglesia de Jesucristo, not only are we expected, but we are also called and commanded to stand for the truth of the Word of God. No solamente se espera, sino que estamos llamados a mantenernos firmes en la palabra de nuestro Dios. Regardless of what culture says. No importa lo que la cultura diga. We need to stand on the principles and the truth of God's word. Nos tenemos que sostener en los principios de la palabra de Dios. Is it becoming increasingly difficult for us to take that stand out in the world? Se, ha, se, nos, ha, se, se nos hace difícil tomar esta postura frente al mundo. It is becoming increasingly difficult to take a stand for truth in these evil days. Lamentablemente sí se está convirtiendo en algo muy duro, muy difícil ponerse firme en los principios de la palabra de Dios But en el mundo en que vivimos as I said a moment ago, pero como dije unos momentos atrás new. esto no es nada nuevo in fact the very first church the first century church had many of its members martyred for their stated faith in Jesus Christ de hecho la iglesia, la iglesia primitiva la iglesia del primer siglo muchos de sus miembros fueron acribillados y fueron matados y sacrificados por mantenerse firme en lo que habían creído en la palabra de Dios. All of this darkness and sin, toda esta oscuridad de todas estas tinieblas y pecado that is in this world that we live in today, que está en este mundo en el que nosotros vivimos hoy día, that is the reason that Jesus came. Es por la razón que Cristo vino. So let's take a few minutes and look at our text and see just a few things that stand out about the birth of Jesus Christ. So vamos a tomar unos minutos y vamos a mirar y vamos a leer algo acerca de lo que sucedió en el nacimiento de Jesús. Our first point to the very obvious and that is this that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. Lo primero que vamos a ver es que Jesús nació de una virgen. Verse 23 says, "Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son." El versículo 23 dice, "He aquí una virgen concebirá y dará a luz un hijo." The very first thing that we see is that the birth of Jesus was unlike any birth that had ever taken place and was unlike any birth that ever would take place. Lo primero que vemos es que el nacimiento de Jesús es como ninguno otro ha sucedido en el mundo, como ninguno otro ha de suceder. It was because he was born of a virgin. Es porque fue nacido de una virgen. Luke says it this way in Luke 1:35. En Lucas 1:35 lo dice de esta manera. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Respondiendo el ángel le dijo, el Espíritu Santo vendrá sobre ti y el poder del Altísimo te cubrirá con su sombra, por lo cual también el santo ser que nacerá será llamado Hijo de Dios. Church, it is critically important. This is a critical doctrine Of our faith. Iglesia, esto es una doctrina sumamente crítica de nuestra iglesia. I've had people ask me, can you not accept the virgin birth and still be a Christian? Hay gente que me ha preguntado que es posible no aceptar el nacimiento virginal de Jesús y seguir siendo cristiano. I'm not God, nor would I attempt to be. Eh, no soy Dios, ni pretendo serlo. But in my heart, pero en mi corazón, I believe that if Jesus Christ takes up residence inside of you. Yo creo que Jesús eh, toma lugar en nuestra vida, se posa sobre nuestro corazón. He will give you the faith to believe the truth of his word, even the parts 
that seem impossible. Y él nos dará la convicción para creer por fe aquellas cosas que aún parecieran imposible para nosotros. It is very important for us as followers of Christ to uphold and contend and even fight for the right of the virgin birth of Jesus Christ to be proclaimed. Es muy eh, importante que nosotros nos mantengamos creyendo y especialmente la doctrina del nacimiento virginal de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Perhaps you're wondering why is this so important? Quizás usted se está preguntando por qué esto es tan importante. It's important when you understand something about sin. Es muy importante cuando usted entiende algo sobre el pecado. Sin was passed down on the entire human race. El pecado ha sido traspasado a toda la raza humana. And we see this to be true in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Y podemos ver que en Romanos capítulo 5 versículo 12. It says, wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Por tanto, como el pecado entró en el mundo por un hombre y por el pecado la muerte, así la muerte pasó a todos los hombres por cuanto todos pecaron. Listen, friends. Escuchen, amigos. Only a virgin born son of God would be unstained by our inherited sin nature. El único que no hereda esa naturaleza es el hijo nacido virginalmente de María. Jesus Christ was not born of man. El hijo de Dios o Cristo Jesús no fue nacido como los hombres nacen regularmente. But the spirit of God moved upon Mary. Pero el espíritu de Dios se posó sobre María. And she conceived. Y entonces fue que ella concibió. Through the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. A través del nacimiento virginal de Cristo Jesús. He was untainted by the sin polluted strain that was being handed down from generation to generation to generation beginning with Adam. Él no fue contaminado con el pecado que se venía traspasando de generación a generación por medio de Adán. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15. En 1 Corintios capítulo 15. Verses 45 through 47. Versículo 45 al 47. It says this, and so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Y si así también está escrito, fue hecho el primer hombre, Adán, alma viviente. El postrer Adán, espíritu vivificante. Mas lo espiritual no es primero, sino lo animal, luego lo espiritual. El primer hombre es de la tierra, terrenal. El segundo hombre, que es el Señor, es del cielo. The first Adam brought sin into the world. El primer Adán trajo pecado al mundo. And because of his sin, y por causa de ese pecado, Death passed upon all mankind. La muerte espiritual pasó a toda la raza humana. But the good news is, pero las buenas noticias son, there was another Adam, que hubo otro Adán, and his name is Jesus Christ. Y su Christ. nombre es Jesús, and he came to bring us life. Y él vino para traernos vida, and he could do so, y lo puede hacer, because he was the untainted, perfect Son of God. Porque él es el perfecto hijo de Dios. And he was born of a virgin y fue nacido de virgen through the Holy Spirit of God. Por la obra del Espíritu Santo de Dios. And this made Jesus Christ the sinless Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity. Y esto lo hace el Hijo de Dios sin pecado, la segunda persona de la Trinidad. Next in this passage of Scripture from Matthew 1, lo próximo que vamos a ver en esta escritura de Mateo capítulo 1, We see clearly stated the reason that Jesus came to this sin-filled world. Vamos a ver exactamente la razón por la que él vino. Verse 21 again says, Versículo 21 dice, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Y dará a luz un hijo y llamará su nombre Jesús, porque él salvará a su pueblo de sus pecados. In our day and age, Names really don't mean a whole lot. En nuestra era los nombres a veces no significan mucho. But in those days names were very important. Pero en esos tiempos los nombres eran de suma importancia. Names were given for specific reasons and purposes. Los nombres se daban por razones específicas y por eh, propósitos específicos. Because they were a description of the character of the person. Porque era una descripción de la personalidad de cada individuo. 
In Jesus' day, there were many young boys named Jesus. Y en los tiempos de Jesús había muchos niños que se le ponía el nombre de Jesús. In fact, in the Hebrew, the Old Testament, it's the name Joshua. De hecho, en el Antiguo Testamento, el nombre es Josué. And in the Greek, the name is Jesus. Y en griego, el nombre es como en español, Jesús. Sí. <laughs> And the name Jesus, church, literally means Jehovah saves. Y el nombre de Jesús lo que literalmente significa es Jehová. Salve. Jehovah, that is God's name. Ese es el nombre de Dios, Jehová. What this verse is really saying is this. Eh, lo que estos versos verdaderamente dicen es lo siguiente. God saves us through his son, Jesus Christ. Jehová nos ha salvado a través de su hijo, Jesucristo. John 3:16. Juan 3:16 tells us that God so loved the world. Nos dice que de tal manera amó Dios al mundo. He so loved each and every single one of us. Que ha salvado a cada uno de nosotros. This verse is not a reference to the creation of the planets and the stars and the earth on which we live. Aquí no se está refiriendo ni a la creación ni a los planetas ni a las estrellas. This verse is all about you. Este versículo se trata God acerca so de cada uno de nosotros. God so loved you that he was willing to give his only son. Nos ha amado tanto que estuvo dispuesto a entregar a su propio hijo. And the best part of this news is this. La mejor parte de esta noticia es lo siguiente. Whosoever, whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Aquel que en él cree no se va a perder, sino que obtendrá la vida eterna. I love, I love Christmas church as much as anybody. I love Christmas. Oh. Do you love Christmas? Eh. <laughs> Él ama, la él ama el tiempo navideño, la Navidad, como cualquier otra persona. I love all the things we do at Christmas. Y yo amo todas las cosas que hacemos en la Navidad. I had a wonderful time coming to Christmas Eve service, which for many people is just a tradition. Sí, él dice que él le encanta venir a el día nochebuena al servicio que se hace aquí, aunque para algunas personas es meramente una tradición. But I actually enjoy the gathering of God's people together to worship Pero him. sinceramente disfruto y me gozo cuando el pueblo de Dios está todo junto alabando. I also Señor. enjoy watching my dad sit in a chair and tell a story to little children. Y él children. encanta ver a su papá aquí sentado dando una historia a los niños en la noche buena. But what I really love about that is that when he's telling the story to the children, eh, lo que más me gusta de eso es que cuando él está dando la historia a los niños, he's also talking to every person seated in the auditorium. Él también le está hablando a cada persona que está sentada en la audiencia. I love the family gathering which we had after the service last él night. Él dice que le encanta el, el tiempo que tuvo con su familia en la noche de ayer. I love the good food. <laughs> a mí también. <laughs> Le encanta la comida. <laughs> sí, tenemos a ver. <laughs> yeah, I, said, I said me too. <laughs> and, and I love the presents and the gift exchange. Y me encantan los regalos y, y el, el intercambio de regalos. But even above all that. Pero por encima de todo eso. I love the fact that God gave to us the most precious gift that has ever been given. Amo el hecho de que Dios nos ha dado el mejor regalo que jamás hayamos podido obtener. You see, Jesus didn't come to give us a day to exchange gifts. Sí, Jesús no vino a darnos un día para intercambiar regalos. We exchange gifts as we reflect upon the fact that God gave us an incredible gift. Lo hacemos como un reflejo del increíble regalo que Dios nos ha dado. He came for the specific purpose. Él vino con un propósito específico for offering himself as a holy and righteous sacrifice para, for our sin. Para ofrecerse como un justo y perfecto sacrificio por nuestros pecados. You see, the holy and righteous God, Ve, el, el santo y justo Dios, he could not just overlook no, our sin, no pudo pasar por alto nuestros pecados. but the sin of all mankind, pero el pecado de todos los hombres, had to be punished tenía que ser castigado because his nature is that he is righteous holy sinless and perfect porque su naturaleza es santa es justa y es perfecta y sin pecado he is righteous and he is holy and he is a sin hating 
God. Él es justo y Él es santo y Él es un Dios que detesta y odia al the, pecado. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3 verses 24 and 25. La palabra nos dice en Romanos capítulo 3 versículo 24 al 25. It says being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Siendo justificados gratuitamente por su gracia mediante la redención que es en Cristo Jesús, a quien Dios puso como propiciación por medio de la fe en su sangre para manifestar su justicia a causa de haber pasado por alto en su paciencia los pecados pasados. Jesus came for the sole purpose of becoming the ultimate sin sacrifice for all mankind. Jesucristo vino con el propósito de ser el, el más alto sacrificio y el único sacrificio que podía salvar a la raza humana. It does not matter what you've done. No importa lo que hayas hecho. Where you've been. Donde has estado. How awful you have been. Cuán terrible haya sido. It doesn't matter how good you think you have been. No importa cuán bueno tú piensas que haya sido. The sacrifice of Christ is sufficient to save every single human being. El sacrificio de Cristo ha sido suficiente para salvar a cada uno de los seres humanos. One of my favorite verses, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2. Uno de mis versículos favoritos, primera de Juan capítulo 2 y versículo 2. It lovingly reminds us that Jesus Christ is the propitiation for our sins. But listen to this, not for Ours as Christians only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Nos recuerda que no solamente ha sido la propiciación por los pecados de nosotros los cristianos, sino por los pecados de todo, todo el mundo. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. Segunda de Pedro 3.9 dice lo siguiente, El Señor no retarda su promesa, según algunos la tienen por tardanza, sino que es paciente para con nosotros, no queriendo que ninguno perezca, sino que todos procedan al arrepentimiento. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people sarcastically say, No puedo decirle cuántas veces he escuchado a la gente decir sarcásticamente, Where is the promise? Of his coming. ¿Dónde está la promesa de su venida? He's patient. Él es paciente. Because he's not willing. Porque él no quiere that any would que perish nadie perezca. And spend an eternity in a Christless hell. Y pase una eternidad en un infierno. He kept his promise the first time. Él mantuvo su promesa la primera vez. That he would send a Messiah who could save us from our sins. Que iba a enviar a un Mesías que nos iba a salvar de nuestros pecados. And believe you me, he will keep his promise in regard to his second return. Y crea well. que él sí va a cumplir la promesa de su segunda venida. I cannot count the times that I had people either make a statement or ask this question. No puedo contar las veces que las personas o han dicho o han hecho esta pregunta. If God is a God of love, si Dios es un Dios de amor, how could a loving God send people to an everlasting place of punishment called hell? ¿Cómo un Dios de amor puede enviar gente a un lugar de eterno castigo y castigarlo de esa manera? The truth is, la verdad es, God doesn't send or choose people for hell. Dios no envía ni escoge personas para el infierno. Unfortunately, lamentablemente, people choose hell over Jesus. La gente escoge el infierno antes de escoger a Jesús. This Jesus, the son of God. Este Jesús, hijo de Dios, he literally became our sin. He didn't just become sin, but he became your sin and my sin. Él literalmente se convirtió en nuestro pecado, no en algún pecado, sino en cada pecado de nosotros. And then he received our punishment on the cross. Y él recibió nuestro castigo en la cruz del Calvario. And that is why church he came to this sin filled dark world. Y por eso iglesia es que él vino a este mundo oscuro de pecado. And then thirdly we also see in this text. Y tercero miramos en este texto. 
that we must be saved by Jesus if we want to be his people. Que debemos ser salvados por Jesús si queremos ser parte de su pueblo. Coming to church is good. Venir a la iglesia es bueno. But it will not make you a Christian. Pero no le va a ser un cristiano. We're so glad that you're here every Sunday when you show up with your smiling face. Estamos muy contentos que usted venga cada, cada domingo con su sonrisa. And look at this crowd on Christmas Day. Mira esta, toda esta multitud en el día de Navidad. But not even coming to church on Christmas Day will pero, make you a Christian. Pero ni tan siquiera venir un domingo de Navidad, el día de Navidad a la iglesia o al servicio, lo va a hacer usted un cristiano. But as pastors, we do appreciate your faithfulness. Pero como pastores, apreciamos que hayan venido en este día. The only way to become his people la única manera de ser su pueblo is you have to give your heart and your life to Jesus. Es que tienes que entregar tu corazón y he tu came, vida a Jesús. church, to save his people from their sin. Iglesia, él vino para salvar a la gente de sus So pecados. the question remains, how do we become his people? So la pregunta que nos debemos hacer es cómo llegamos a ser su pueblo. There are millions of people in the world today Hay millones de personas en el mundo de hoy who have a belief in God. They have a belief in God. Que han creído. In they haven't? They have a belief, oh, yeah. Que ya han creído en Cristo. But they are trying to work their own way Pero están into his tratando presence. de hacer su propio camino. But the Bible teaches us in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. Pero la palabra nos enseña en Efesios capítulo 2 versículos 8 y 9. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any person should boast. Dice, porque por gracia soy salvo por medio de la fe y esto no de vosotros, pues es un don de Dios, no por obras para que nadie se gloríe. The message that we should take to the world el mensaje que debemos llevar al mundo is that our salvation is made available through his grace. Es que nuestra salvación está disponible a través de su gracia. But it's also the thing that we need to tell them is that it is acquired, it is attained through our faith. Pero lo que sí debemos decirle que se obtiene solamente a través de nuestra You say, fe. maybe you're here today and you're one who's never put your faith in Jesus. Me, quizás usted está aquí en el día de hoy y nunca ha depositado su fe en Cristo. I will tell you that if you will just ask the Lord to give you the faith to believe, yo le voy a decir que si usted le pide a Dios que le dé la fe para creer, he will. Él lo va a hacer. No person comes to Christ on their own account. Nadie viene a Jesús por su propia cuenta. But the Spirit of God draws us to him. Pero el Espíritu de Dios nos lleva a él. We are saved by his grace through our faith. Somos salvos por su gracia a través de Our faith is our willingness to believe his word. Nuestra fe es The willingness. Our willingness. Es nuestra, uh, nuestra iniciativa para creer en Él. And accept the gift which He has given to us. Y aceptar el regalo que se nos ha dado. It's beyond me why anyone would say no thanks to His forgiveness. Él no entiende, yo tampoco, como algunas personas dicen no quiero ese regalo. He has made salvation so simple for us. Él ha hecho la salvación tan simple para nosotros. But never think that it was easy. Our yeah. salvation was not easy and it was not cheap. Nuestra salvación no fue ni fácil ni barata para él. Jesus Christ had to shed his sinless blood. Jesucristo tuvo que derramar toda su sangre pura y perfecta sin pecado. In order to save us. Para poder salvarnos. Romans 10 verse 9. Romanos capítulo 10 versículo 9 says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Dice que si confesares con tu boca que Jesús es el Señor y creyeres en tu corazón que Dios le levantó de los muertos, serás salvo. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, Christmas is all about Jesus. La Navidad se trata todo acerca de Jesús. And I love the manger. I love the manger in the stable story. Y él ama el, pes en el pesebre en la historia. But Christmas is really not about a manger. 
Y la Navidad tampoco se trata de un pesebre. It's really about a cross. Es realmente de una cruz. A cross that the Lord Jesus bore so that we could have entrance into the kingdom of God through our faith in him. La cruz que Cristo llevó para que nosotros tengamos la fe en su reino a través de su My biggest request to you today. Mi, uh, my biggest request. Mi mayor inquietud para usted o mi, uh, uh, lo, lo que más le está pidiendo en este día would be not to miss the greatest blessing of Christmas. Que por favor, no se pierda la mayor bendición de la Navidad. Don't say no to Jesus. No le diga no a nuestro Señor Jesús. Say yes to him today. Dígale que sí en el día de hoy. Let's bow our heads together. Por favor, inclinemos los rostros y vamos a orar. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much. Señor Jesús, te agradecemos tanto. For coming into this world. Por venir a este mundo. Living a perfect, sinless, holy, and righteous life. Vivir una vida justa, perfecta y santa. And Lord, taking our sin in your body. Señor, y tomaste nuestros pecados en tu cuerpo. And paying a price that we could not pay ourselves. Y pagaste el, pe el precio que nosotros no podíamos pagar. And offering forgiveness and redemption. Y ofreciendo perdón y salvación y redención. To all mankind. Para todos los hombres. My prayer today. Mi oración hoy is that if there's one here this morning, es que haya alguien esta mañana, one watching online, alguien viendo en online, who's never given their heart and life to Jesus, que nunca le ha entregado su corazón y su vida a Jesús, that they would do as the scripture says, que ellos lo puedan hacer como dice tu escritura, confess that Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God, confesar que Jesús es el Hijo de Dios, and believe in their heart, y creer en su corazón, that you have raised him from the dead. Que tú lo levantaste de la muerte. And Lord, based upon your promise, y basado en tu promesa, Señor, we are told that they shall be saved. Y sabemos, según declara tu palabra, que serán salvos. In Jesus' name. En Cristo Jesús. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Man, look at that one. We are spot on one hour. Mm -hmm. Y'all are I, like, man, you should translate more often, Brother Roy. I, I, All right. I cut half of it. No, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk to my wife later and find out. <laughs> for real, when I was preaching in Uruguay one time for Shirley's dad, we were down there at Christmas several years ago, and he asked me to preach on a Sunday night, and because uh, Sunday night down there is their big service, yeah. right? And so he asked me to preach, and I said, okay, sure. He said, oh, I'm, I'm going to translate. I said, okay. And he said, but in America, y'all don't preach long enough. So I'm going to take what you say instead of condense. He said, and I'm going to add on, and I'm going to make it a real sermon. I said, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Walter. Hey. Thank you, Poppy. <laughs> hey, we love y'all. Let's stand Le together. Vamos. Vamos a en pie. If you're our guest, please take that Connect card. Brother Doyle's headed back to the Connect table. We want you to have a merry and blessed Christmas day, and we hope to see you all next Sunday for New Year's Day as we start the year. Que tenga un feliz bendecido día de Navidad y nos vemos el próximo domingo a las nueve y media de clase, okay? Brother Juan, dismiss us in prayer. Okay, vamos a orar. I'm going to pray in Spanish. So. Can you translate? <laughs> <laughs> Señor y Padre, damos gracias en este día tan hermoso que tú nos has permitido tener. A ti sea toda la gloria, la honra y toda la alabanza, Señor. Bendice a mis hermanos en este día que puedan ir y compartir en familia, Señor. Y que podamos siempre anunciar ese reino maravilloso a través de la fe, en el mejor regalo que hayamos podido recibir, tu Hijo Jesucristo. En el nombre de Cristo Jesús oramos. Amén. Amén. Okay, oh, there you are. Am I supposed to let these go today? Seniors. I'll try my best. Seniors. First, all the poinsettias, feel free to take one home for your family, set it by the fireplace, by the front door, but we would love for all these to be taken today. So help yourselves to the poinsettias, seniors first, then the rest last.